John chapter 16, and we'll begin at verse 13, and we'll read a few verses. Jesus is speaking, of course, and he says, How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath, hath are mine, therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Amen. We ask God to bless his word to us. And we're all thankful that the Lord Jesus Christ did indeed go to the Father, because in going to the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. We are thankful here, or we should be, that the mission of the church is clearly stated in the words of Scripture that are bolted to the external wall, where we're told we preach Christ. And it's such an encouragement to me to know that not only is our mission bolted to the wall, but the foundation of the church is there for all to see who come in. Foundation no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And it's, the more I think about it, the more precious that becomes in its position. It's position beneath the pulpit. And it illustrates loudly that the foundation of that pulpit has always been Jesus Christ. And the foundation of that pulpit will always be Jesus Christ. There is no other foundation than Jesus, and there's no other message than Jesus Christ. Our mission is to preach him, standing strongly and securely upon him. Tonight's message is called he shall glorify me, from verse 14 of the passage that we've read. He shall glorify me. You see, as we set about our ministry or our mission as the church, the Holy Spirit's ministry should be our example. Verse 14 tells us that that ministry is to glorify Christ. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus Christ. And that can be a challenge to us, and it can be a rebuke to some that the ministry of God's Spirit is to lift up Jesus. That's the focus he has. And we're told in the, the previous verse that the, the Spirit of truth, when he comes, will guide us into all truth. That's all truth about Jesus Christ. In the previous chapter, chapter 15, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And so the Holy Spirit's whole mission is to exalt the Lord Jesus, to lift him up. He'll lead us into all truth. He'll guide us. He'll comfort us, all with a purpose of showing us Jesus, of bringing Jesus before us. We're told in that same verse that he, he won't speak of himself 
He'll speak what he hears. In other words, he will say nothing unless it has been received by him from God. He'll not say anything of his own. He'll just bring what he has received from Christ. We're told as well that he shall take from what is mine, says Jesus, and he'll show it to you. In other words, the Holy Spirit's mission is to point us to him, to point us to Jesus. That's why it can be a challenge. That's why to some it's even a rebuke. But when we read in these verses that the Holy Spirit won't speak of himself, it also means that not only will he not say anything that he hasn't received, but he will not speak about himself. This is what we need to really grasp as Christians. The Holy Spirit will not exalt himself. He will not speak about himself. He'll speak about Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, God has revealed them unto us, these beautiful things, these beautiful truths about the gospel. God has revealed un them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth the things of all, the, the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. And now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit does not speak of himself, about himself. He speaks about Jesus Christ. He points us to the truths of the gospel. He shows us Jesus Christ crucified, risen, and exalted. He shows us Christ on the cross. He shows us Christ in the tomb. He shows us Christ rising again, exalted to the right hand of God. He shows us Christ returning. He speaks to us not about himself, but about Jesus. So why am I speaking about the ministry of the Holy Spirit at this moment? Well, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to connect his goal with our mission. His goal and our mission are connected. We've already stated what our mission is. And going forward, our mission must remain the mission of God's Spirit to glorify Jesus Christ. That's a challenge to so many. Because there are whole swathes of the church who speak about the Holy Spirit all the time. They speak about the Holy Spirit in ways that he would never speak of himself. There are many who constantly speak about the gifts of the Spirit, especially tongues. That's what Paul was teaching against in 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapters 12, 13, and 14, Paul is trying to correct an inappropriate focus on the gifts of the Spirit. Now, we believe in these beautiful things. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We believe these gifts are for today. 
We believe that the Holy Spirit enables us to serve. We believe all of that, and we long for manifestation of that in our, our midst. But when we teach them, we need to teach them appropriately. It's fascinating to think that when we prior prioritize the Holy Ghost, the precious Holy Spirit, when we prioritize Him, His actions, His gifts, His blessings, with greater enthusiasm than we do the cross of Jesus Christ, or when we focus on these aspects disconnected from the cross of Jesus Christ. We are not following the ministry of the Spirit himself. That's not what the Holy Spirit does ever. Yet there are whole sections of the church tonight who speak of these things all the time. More than they would Jesus crucified. More than they They've disconnected these things from the cross. And what you end up doing when we do that is that we're, we're not speaking about God. We're not speaking about God for his sake, for the sake of Christ. We're speaking about the Holy Spirit for our sake. Because we want the gifts. We want the blessings. We want the feelings. The Holy Spirit never does that. I can stand here and I'm, I'm saying that with a hundred percent conviction in my heart. That the Spirit of God speaks about Jesus. His aim is to glorify Jesus. Please don't be sitting there thinking that the pastor's some kind of crazy cessationist. I'm not. But the pastor is crazy about exalting Jesus Christ. And we thank God that this church has done that. But you see, we've turned, as you know, Christianity has turned things on its head. And we've put ourselves at the center of everything. And so the Spirit exists for us. And the Spirit doesn't exist for us. Everything He gives, every blessing that He pours into our lives, and my goodness, I'm testimony to the fact that the Holy Spirit pours blessing into the lives of believers. Every, everything he gives us, everything he does, always has the goal of glorifying Jesus Christ. If this church has been blessed in the past, it has not been because Zion is special to God. Zion might be special to us, but Zion is not special to God. The remnant is special to God. Wherever the remnant are, any blessing Zion has received has been to glorify Christ. Oh, and we praise the Lord that he's enabled us to do it. But you see, as we look into the future, there's going to be blessing coming to this church. Not because we are deserving of it, but because our gracious God wants to bless his people so that his people will glorify the Son. Because when the Son is glorified, the Father receives the glory. That's what we're here for. And so the challenge to us is to be Christ exalting at all times. To look to Jesus at all times. And so much of the church has forgotten that. We do need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and we'll be praying for that on Friday. We need an outpouring of the Spirit in our day. 
But the way that happens is when the church of Jesus Christ makes the glorifying of God, the glorification of Jesus, the focus of all we do. My heart's desire in this message is to connect exalting Jesus with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It does not happen without that. Even when we look back and we see people in prayer seeking God to come in power. God has come in power at times to glorify Christ, to receive glory through his people. And so that will be the case as we go forward. We need to glorify Jesus before all things, in all things, and above all things. Our heart's desire tonight should be to come in prayer to bring glory to Christ, to exalt him, to lift him up, to praise and worship his holy name. That's the point of a prayer meeting. The point of the prayer meeting tonight and Friday is to bring glory to Jesus. Lord, we want to exalt you. Yeah, we bring our requests couched in a heart's desire to glorify Christ. He will glorify me, says Jesus. He won't glorify you. He won't even glorify the church, not you as an individual, not the church corporately. He'll glorify Christ. We need to minister in that way because that is the kind of ministry that the Holy Spirit will bless. The Holy Spirit will bless a ministry that echoes his own ministry. And the challenge doesn't end there. You see, the challenge we face is that all of us here want to be Christians who are filled with the Holy Ghost. We want to be living that kind of life. We want this church to be a spirit-filled church. Pastor, you're still speaking about the Holy Spirit. I'm not. We want this church to be a spirit-filled church. We want people to come into this place and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit here. We want our lives to have that flavor, to have that color upon them. We want our service to be effective and full for God. We want our ministries to be owned by God, the Holy Spirit. We want to have an anointed church, an anointed fellowship, anointed ministries within this church. That's what we long for. So what's the sign of an anointed ministry, whatever your ministry is? What is the sign that your ministry is anointed? What is the sign that this fellowship is anointed? It's focused completely upon Jesus Christ. Zion Baptist Church, we must remain focused upon Jesus because you see when more people come in and I believe more people will come but as people begin to come into the church there may be a temptation to adapt one or two things I don't mean our own human traditions they are able to be adapted but we might adapt one or two things or be tempted to adapt things to make them more comfortable make comfortable make them more at ease say some things that will 
Make them happy. But you see, the challenge is, no matter who comes in, we glorify Christ. We preach in such a way that Christ is happy, even if those who come in are not happy. They can go away again. That's the joy of having a focus like the Holy Spirit's focus to glorify Jesus. Because if that's our focus always, as it has been, if it remains our focus into the future, at the risk of being misunderstood, it doesn't matter if people come and people go. Because we are here not to attract people, but to glorify Jesus Christ. Is that not? Can you not, can you not feel that in your heart? Can you not feel the weight getting lifted off your shoulders? My ministry is to glorify Jesus. Do you know that they didn't like what you said? Am I here? Are we here? as men pleasers or as ministers of Christ, servants of Christ. When we're servants of Christ, the only thing that matters is what matters to the Holy Spirit. We will glorify him. I love being able to stand in that kind of position. I love it. I love the feeling that it brings to the heart of a Christian when we suddenly realize afresh that if we focus on Jesus and do everything for him, the blessing will come. But if we focus on the blessing, we're putting the brakes on it. We're getting in the way of it. His ministry is to glorify the Savior. I've quoted Spurgeon recently, just because he's never far from my mind when I'm, I'm preparing and thinking. And he said, when he focused on Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit came in like a dove. When he focused on the Holy Spirit, the dove flew away. That sums it up. Focus on Jesus and the Spirit comes because the Spirit will bless a ministry that glorifies Christ. Focus on the Holy Spirit all the time and he will leave us to our own devices. Because he does not want to be glorified above the Lord. His ministry is to glorify God. How can we glorify anyone other than the person that the Holy Spirit longs to glorify? But the minute we glorify Jesus, oh my goodness me, the blessing starts to come into our lives, into our ministries, into the church. You're looking at me as if you don't believe that. But you see, this is true. Why would Jesus say that he will send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will comfort and teach and the Holy Spirit will do so to glorify me, he says. Why did Jesus say that if that is not the most important thing within the heart of God? Within the heart of God is the, glory, the glorifying, the exaltation of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is above all. Jesus Christ is greater than all. Jesus Christ is supreme, as we heard on Sunday evening. And our ministry as a church and your ministry as an individual Christian is to make known to everyone we come into contact with when we are given the opportunity Jesus Christ 
is worthy of all glory and no one else. What is the purpose of me standing here preaching through the week and on the Lord's day? It's to glorify Jesus. Why does Andrine and Emma pick the hymns for worship and lead us in worship? It's to glorify Christ. Why do we teach Sunday school? To keep the kids happy, to keep the kids quiet, to get the kids out of the road of the church because they might cause a disturbance. No, it's to glorify Jesus Christ. Why do we work the sound system and the screens and put things on Zoom? It's to glorify Jesus Christ. And the longer we do that, and the more we do that, and the deeper we do that, the blessing will come. Because he will bless such a ministry. A ministry that follows the example that he sets is a ministry he will own and bless. A life that follows the example he sets will be blessed. A church fellowship that follows the example he sets will be blessed. And we're coming to pray to him tonight. We're coming to speak to him tonight, to glorify our Savior. Oh, Father, bless our time in your presence. Father, we do bow before you tonight and we thank you that you've called us to this ministry of lifting up the name of our Savior, exalting him above all others. And as we do that tonight, Father, we pray that we would know your pleasure, that we would feel your pleasure, know that the smile of God is upon us. And so, Father, help us now as we come to our time of prayer. Help us to be I was going to say help us to marvel, but help us to even be overwhelmed, Lord, that we are coming to this one to speak, that the one whose glory and exaltation is the purpose of our lives is willing to engage with us tonight. We thank you with full hearts as we seek to glorify Jesus. In his holy name we pray. Amen.